I spent the last week using my Pixel Watch LTE almost exclusively to see how long I could go without using my phone. However, it hasn't been quite the revolutionary experience I was expecting. In this video, I cover off all the good points and all the bad points of owning the Pixel Watch LTE. There are a number of highlights, but also a list of bugs and issues experienced, which I'm putting down to being first generation hardware and early firmware. If you're like me, every now and then I would like the ability to leave my phone at home but also still want to be connected in some way to take calls and reply to urgent messages. With that in mind, I bought the more expensive Pixel Watch LTE version so that I could live the dream but also have the convenience of being connected while not packing my phone everywhere. In my previous video about my Galaxy Watch 4, I talked at length about how I wanted the pure Android experience for my watch just like my Pixel phone. After making some basic changes, I was able to get it to be close to the experience I wanted, but I've always had an eye on buying a Pixel Watch as a Pixel enthusiast. Well, I was delighted to finally be able to buy the Pixel Watch after its recent launch. I chose the LTE version of the watch as I've always wanted more freedom from my phone in certain situations. For example, I bought an e-bike, and unless I bring a backpack, I have to ensure my Pixel 6 Pro is either wedged inside my pocket to avoid it slipping out while I'm pedaling, or I have to bring a backpack to stow it. Similarly, when I do a short school run, I don't always want to pack my phone with me, but if I want to coordinate with my wife or listen to music or podcasts on the walk, I have to bring my Pixel phone along the way. In general, with the increase in size of modern phones and the 6-inch screens, comfortably slipping the phones into your pockets without the unsightly bulges or slipping out isn't always possible. It was with great expectation that I welcomed the Pixel Watch LTE. The promise of being able to connect the watch to my phone plan should mean my Pixel phone could finally be benched and subbed into action only when needed. However, after owning the Pixel watch, even for a few short days, there are a number of issues that became evident which should give most buyers pause for consideration. As well as the promise of a seamless integration with the Android ecosystem, the most attractive feature of the Pixel watch is the design. The round, pebble-like design immediately sets it apart from its competitors. I was already a big fan of the Galaxy Watch, but the more stylized design of the Pixel Watch was even more eye-catching. The experience continues in person when first unboxing the watch. However, as has been well covered by many reviews, the watch is surprisingly small and compact, especially noticeable compared to both my Galaxy Watch and my previous Tick Watch Pro. Aesthetically, if my wrist was much bigger, it would look a little too small for some people. The strap employs the same tucking feature that I really liked on the Galaxy Watch, where the excess strap is folded under the main strap. As a small side note when tinkering with the much publicised strap mechanism, I discovered some hidden contacts that look like they have some future utility, with smart accessories or alternative straps. Quite what they will be is a mystery at this time, as nothing has been announced by Google. The other notable feature for me is the crown. As well as doubling up as the power and back button, twisting it scrolls up and down in the various apps. I can't say I'm a big fan of it, but I'll explain more later in this video. The laundry list of other features include the wealth of sensors for the health and fitness tracking apps using Fitbit and Google Fit. Plus, the watch comes with 32 gigs of onboard flash memory to download apps and audio. As a final note, interestingly, the Pixel Watch doesn't have an official water resistance rating on the IP scale, but the literature does mention its resistance up to 5 atmospheres, or the equivalent of 50 meters or 148 feet. Whether Google is moving away from the standard IP rating, or the watch has yet to be rated, remains to be seen. Setting up the Pixel Watch LTE isn't quite as straightforward as I'd hoped. That's not to say the process technically isn't meant to be straightforward, but as always with some technologies there can be game-stopping bugs and the bugs are usually related to networking in my experience. My own troubles centered around trying to get the LTE network working properly. It's worth noting that at this point, everyone will have a unique experience and reading through the community groups, it would seem that I may well be an outlier. However, after running through the process of adding the additional eSIM to my carrier account, following the menus on the watch, I hit an impasse. My first issue was after I had successfully run the setup with my carrier and added the additional $10 Canadian per month charges to my account. Unfortunately, after connecting my watch to the LTE network, my phone then refused to connect to the 5G network, defaulting to the slow HSPA Plus network. I spoke with my carrier customer support at length, and after a marathon troubleshooting session via a phone call, we managed to get it connected after three restarts. Hopefully my experience isn't commonplace, but being the first generation of the hardware and software, there's always a chance that other owners will have a poor first experience as myself. Unfortunately, due to battery issues, which I also talk about later in the video, I had to factory reset the Pixel Watch, which disconnected my eSIM from the carrier network. 
This time, after chatting with Google customer support, we narrowed down the issue to having to completely erase the eSIM and then log on to my carrier credentials again. One thing to note for anyone experiencing similar issues is the customer support documentation is ever so slightly different to what you'll actually experience on your watch and phone. Some creative thinking is required to fix the problems experienced. The setup for my Pixel Buds was seamless. In fact, before I had a chance to actually search for the Pixel Buds after setting them up in pairing mode, they appeared in the watch menu. The interconnectivity between my Pixel 6 Pro enables a very convenient device setup. The watch uses the saved Bluetooth profiles on the phone and transfers the credentials to the watch, so it's just a case of choosing your previously connected devices. One thing to note that unfortunately Google Assistant doesn't work with just the Pixel Watch LTE. To trigger the Assistant using my Pixel Buds Pro, I have to use my phone connected via Bluetooth. Pressing the earphone you normally have set up to launch Assistant just plays an error sound. You'll have to manually launch Google Assistant using the watch. When it comes to making phone calls, I highly recommend using your Bluetooth earphones for the best experience. With your headphones, you're not always required to awkwardly hold the watch to your mouth and ear to be able to hear the audio in a noisy environment. My own experience with the Pixel Buds Pro was great. Obviously, when taking calls, it's not always possible to quickly pop in your earphones unless you're comfortable leaving the call hanging for a few moments. When you just rely on the microphone and speaker in the phone, it's functional. The microphone is good pickup for the listener, but the speaker on the watch is just a little bit lackluster and not suitable for noisy environments. You can use the crown to adjust the volume of the speaker, but even at max volume you'll struggle to hear the caller. I wasn't expecting stellar performance from the speaker anyway, and I'm married to my Pixel Buds Pro, so I don't anticipate this being a deal breaker for me. However, my biggest bugbear with the watch when it comes to the interface is the lack of a tile for making calls to your most important contacts. Unlike the Galaxy Watch, there's no tile available to have a quick way to contact your top contacts. If you're not using the Assistant, which might not be convenient in public, you have to navigate to the Apps drawer first and then choose Contacts or Phone App. Hopefully this is something that will be addressed and updated soon. I did find a minor workaround for some watch faces, however. You're able to create a contact complication or widget so you can at least have your single most important contact available as a quick shortcut. It was while using my Pixel Watch for texting my friends and family that I came across the most idiosyncratic feature. To use your watch, even when you're connected separately to your phone network and your phone is not on your person, the phone has to be turned on. My expectation was that I could leave my phone off after connecting my watch to my carrier plan. However, on trying to message my wife, I was presented with the message that said my phone is currently offline. After trawling the Google support pages, I found out the fact that even if you don't have your phone with you, it must be turned on, which was very surprising. Again, leaving your phone turned on isn't the end of the world, but it's definitely a big step away from the dream of a mobile phone experience on your wrist. My own tech problems have been compounded with some network issues mentioned earlier. While on a walk, I found that despite having the LTE connected to the Pixel Watch, I had the same error message as before, even with my phone turned on at home. After tapping around and checking my network was still connected, I had to perform a restart to get the watch working correctly. Another one to add to the list of fixes and future software updates. When it is working as intended, texting and messaging via other apps like Facebook Messenger work as normal. Facebook Messenger is particularly interesting as there is no official watch app. You can simply reply to incoming messages via the notifications on your watch. Not the implementation that Facebook fans will like, but it semi-works. Music playback to my uneducated and unprofessional ear is as good as playing music from my Pixel 6 Pro. With the LTE version, I'm able to stream music if I leave my phone at home. However, both versions of the watch enable you to download playlists you've created on your phone to the onboard storage, which will save your data plan if needed. One massive issue for me personally is the fact that Google Podcast doesn't have a watch app. And the audio file sizes won't use much more memory than your music collection. It's a mind-boggling omission. You can download a third-party app, but I hope that official support for Google Podcasts is forthcoming. I personally prefer to main parity with my phone. Of course, Spotify is available for those that use the app instead, but Apple Music and popular podcast app Pocket Casts are not. Google Pay, the digital wallet, is extremely easy to set up and accessible either via the shade menu or by double pressing the crown or the secondary button. Setup requires accepting the terms from your bank and using your banking app or two-factor authentication via SMS. Unlike Galaxy Watch, you're unable to reassign the buttons, which would have been nice for launching shortcuts to other apps if you're not using your watch to pay for things regularly. 
It has to be said, the biggest disappointment for me is the fact that Google Maps doesn't work without your phone, even with the LTE data connection. If you attempt to use Google Maps on your watch without your phone, it will launch the app but show the message, connect to phone. There's no other option or functionality beyond zooming in and out of the tiny map on your wrist. I was very much looking forward to having a way to navigate without needing to pack my phone with me on bike rides. It feels like a giant miss by Google. Even a way to download a map or a route before leaving your phone at home would have been preferable to no functionality at all. Finally, because of the lack of utility without your phone being present, you'll also miss out on accurate tracking for other activities in Google Maps timeline. I quite enjoyed reading my digest of activities and keeping my personal data updated. There were some useful insights which have actually helped me with record keeping for official documents in the past. Unfortunately, if I leave my phone at home, my Google Maps timeline is no longer updated. Again, it's a minor irritation, but I would love to see all the official Google Apps and services share data for my own benefit. One big selling point of the Pixel Watch is the closer integration of Google Assistant. By depressing the secondary physical button or simply using the trigger phrase, you're able to launch Google Assistant on the watch. It's surprisingly responsive, which is critical for usability, although you will notice a slight lag compared to using Assistant on your phone, but it's understandable given the hardware differences. The Assistant performs all the standard tasks, but like Galaxy Watch, it doesn't support Google routines. This seems to be the case across the board for non-phone or Google Home devices. Understandably, there must be some technical limitations to implementing it, but some of my routines are simple enough that the lack of support is surprising. The integration of Google Fitbit is a huge selling point of the Pixel Watch, and the device lives in both the smartwatch category on the Google Store, and is also prominently featured in Fitbit's range of devices on their website. Fitbit is the favoured app and service for the watch, and the app utilises the large range of sensors included on the watch itself for health and activity tracking. You're able to continue using Google Fit, which is like Fitbit Lite, should you so desire. If fitness and health tracking isn't as important to you, then Google Fit will meet all of your needs. Fitbit is installed by default and Google Fit is not. That is a clear indicator of Google's own strategy behind the watch. However, simply downloading the Google Fit app and connecting it to your account is very straightforward too. When it comes to Fitbit, I did see some reviewers mention that auto tracking for activity was not enabled. However, in my own experience, Smart Track is active even when using the watch without your phone. However, so far it's only been tracking my walks and not my rides, which is odd. You can of course manually trigger any activity tracking via the app or an official tile. Plus, some watch faces include complications that give you a handy shortcut to do the same action. I did very much like the automatic tracking and accuracy of my Galaxy Watch using Samsung Health, even if I didn't like the fact I had to use a third-party app to sync my data with Google Fit. At this part of the video, it's worth pointing out one thing I noticed, which will adversely affect battery life further. If you're manually triggering an activity for Fitbit, the screen stays on, even if you've set it to timeout and turn itself off. I'm not sure why you'd need the screen to stay on when the battery performance is so important. If you're working out, tilt to wake should be enough to enable users to check in on their sessions without the need to drain the battery further. Hopefully this is another area that Google will address with a future update. Unlike my Galaxy Watch, the Pixel Watch does natively support Google Home Control, which I use multiple times a day on my phone, and now my watch. After the system update, after unboxing, the Google Home icon appears in the shade menu at the very top, for ease of use. Tapping on it opens up the same interface as the Home app on your phone. You can scroll through your predefined rooms and then tapping again takes you to the individual devices in that room. Depending on the device, you can tap to toggle the on-off state or drag your finger to set the brightness level or volume level of various devices. I wasn't originally going to break out battery life into its own chapter for this video, but after my experience as a first-time early adopter, I thought it prudent to share some more details. Out of the box, after the first system update and after a restart, I was plagued by epic battery drain. From 7am at 100% battery, I was reduced to 34% remaining charge at 11.40am, almost 5 hours of use on day 1. This was with the screen off by default using Tilt to Wake. As a side note, I don't really see the point of having the screen on and not actively reading the time or notifications. Given the marketing of the battery life and reading up on the experiences of other users who haven't experienced the battery drain, I knew that something was afoot for my particular Pixel Watch. I read through the community support pages and discovered that a factory reset was probably required. I had some trepidation about factory resetting a watch I'd only just fought with to get connected to my mobile phone plan. 
I spent some time exploring the mobile settings on the phone and I believe I identified a bug where the network radio was on permanently even when connected to my phone via Bluetooth or via my home Wi-Fi network. It was enough for me to bite the bullet and go through with the setup again. During the procedure I was pleased to discover that there was an option to reset without having to delete my eSIM which had given me so much trouble earlier, so I tapped the option. Unfortunately I discovered afterward not resetting the eSIM as part of the process disconnected my watch from my carrier network. The bug required contacting Google Support Online, who after another marathon troubleshooting session with some slightly incorrect instructions managed to switch on the radio again. However, all the toil was worth it, since the factory reset and resetting my eSIM and reconnecting my carrier credentials, by day two, the network radio now switches off when connected via Bluetooth or my Wi-Fi network and no longer eats my battery unnecessarily. I'm happy to report that I now seem to have much better battery longevity, finishing the day with 8% charge after 15 hours on day two, and it improved to more acceptable levels each day ever since. However, it's short of the 24 hours mentioned in the marketing. After perusing other watch owners' comments, I think my usage is probably more intense than most with more solo walks and keeping the watch connected to my home Wi-Fi network. The battery life meets my current needs, but I will be concerned as to whether it will get me through a full day of normal activity as the battery performance wanes with age. On the plus side, the Pixel Watch charges even faster than my larger 44mm Galaxy Watch. Admittedly, the battery is smaller, which helps, but the charge times seem to be consistent with Google's marketing. Overall, general performance of the watch in other areas is functional to great. Wear OS 3.5 is responsive and as quick as my Galaxy Watch, which actually has a faster processor, although slightly less RAM. You can navigate around the watch without any noticeable lag. The screen is nice and bright, even in sunny conditions, which is ideal. There's an option to boost the brightness in direct sunlight, which drains the battery faster, but if you're spending a lot of time in the sunshine, you'll find it useful. The crown is a little finicky for my fingers, but the button is clicky and prominent enough that you don't have to go looking for it. The secondary button requires a little bit more precise handling as it sits underneath the watch more, pressing against the skin. But again, nothing to write home about. In terms of the fit and form, the watch strap is made of silicon or a soft rubberized plastic and is perfectly comfortable. I found it all to be in perfect working order without blowing away my expectations with a new or clever design versus my Galaxy Watch. I didn't think the relatively small 41mm diameter would bother me after watching the initial reviews elsewhere. However, I must say I do prefer my 44mm Galaxy Watch in terms of aesthetics. I like the broader profile despite my slim wrists. I believe that it was probably a design choice by Google to appeal to the lowest common denominator to attract the broadest audience. Also, from a first-gen hardware point of view testing the market, there's always the opportunity for Google to release a bigger variation later, hopefully with a bigger battery too. I actually found the crown to be a little pointless. It requires many rotations to scroll through the apps and it's faster to use the touchscreen instead. I also personally found that my finger would slip off the crown when trying to use it. In comparison, the design of the Galaxy Watch with its capacitive bezel was much more user friendly. The bezel on the Pixel Watch is wide enough that Google could have potentially explored a capacitive dial like the Galaxy Watch. Again, maybe an option for a future iteration. Another very peculiar and not well publicized feature is the requirement to have your phone switched on to send and receive text messages. Even if you leave your phone at home, it has to be turned on. After reviewing the support pages, it would seem the message composed or received on your watch must transit via your phone via your Pixel Watch LTE data plan. It's an extra step, but while not insurmountable, the idiosyncratic design is frustrating for new users unaware of the requirement. The fact that Google Maps doesn't work with your phone within Bluetooth range is also disappointing. I had dreams of riding around phone free but still being able to navigate to new places. It's understandable given the hardware limitations but simply having the option to preload a route in advance feels like a missed opportunity. My next couple of frustrations are probably more easily addressed and hopefully there's enough of the community finding the same problems that Google will be inspired to make updates. The first is the strange omission for the ability to create a context tile like the Galaxy Watch. I find the convenience of being able to swipe and quickly choose my family contacts really convenient on the Galaxy Watch. However, on Pixel Watch, there's no similar tile. Another disappointing omission for me was that Google routines don't work on Wear OS, even on Google's own watch hardware. I have a number of routines set up to automate my home. I was disappointed when my Galaxy Watch wasn't able to trigger them through the Google Assistant. 
but I was even more disappointed to learn that the Pixel Watch doesn't have any of the routines even when those routines don't require specifying a device. On the plus side, the Pixel Watch does deliver against some of the promises of the marketing. For instance, you can make and take phone calls on the LTE version without the need for your phone, which is great for those niche situations I mentioned earlier in the video. Also, while the message functionality does require your phone to be on and connected to data wherever you left it, it works too, network connection bugs aside. One really nice upgrade over my Galaxy Watch is the integration of Google Home that adds controls in the watch settings via the downloadable app. There was no similar option in the Samsung Watch, so being able to quickly access and control my home via my watch without the need for the phone is handy. Ultimately, the Pixel Watch LTE is a halfway house that isn't designed to stand by itself as a mobile device. It's useful in niche situations, but ultimately it's meant to be tethered to your phone for full utility, as seen by Google Maps and the very specific way the watch handles messages with the phone remotely. It does beg the question why you'd buy the LTE version for almost $100 more. It will really only find an audience among those users who require some ability to be contactable if the phone is not already a constant companion. For all other users looking for a smartwatch who don't anticipate being without their phone, you're probably better off sticking to the non-LTE version. Finally, I have to jump on the bandwagon about battery life, at least with the LTE version specifically. While I know the radio function to connect to my carrier network is going to be pretty power hungry, 15 hours of total battery life per day is too short. I certainly wouldn't be able to use it for sleep monitoring functions after a full day without being able to plug it in for an hour before bedtime. I am enjoying all the features and I'm definitely excited to see how Google takes on board all the consistent feedback from users and reviewers for the next generation of the Pixel Watch. Thanks for watching and as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on the connected home and personal technology.